This is, I'm Dr. Roz, for those of you that don't know, VP of Communication, and I want to start this morning off in prayer. Um, got a call this morning, and we're praying for Phyllis, Phyllis's Lewis, who has been hospitalized, and she's been in the, at the hospital with him all night. So we're praying, praying, praying for his uh, quick, quick recovery. Uh, you know, life happens, the enemy attacks. We're so great to hear the report from Ms. Pat Belt that she is cancer free. But let me tell you something, when these things take place in our life, we've got to call on something higher than ourselves. So we're going to pray because I, I'm going to tell you why, what I really, really believe. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for, for Lewis. I ask you for your anointing and your spirit and your healing virtue to go to that hospital room and touch his body. Raise him up. You are the God that healeth thee. God, I pray for Terry Anderson, God, with the loss of her mother. I pray for her strength, the strength of our family. I pray, God, for every person that's here in Akana land that has a loss, that's dealing with the loss, that's dealing with a sickness that maybe they haven't verbalized to anybody. Maybe it's a sickness that's unknown to them and unknown to the doctors to even figure it out. But we pray for healing, God, because you're the God that healeth thee. I pray for those that have losses, whether that loss was present or whether that loss was in the past. And that loss has come back up, whether it was a loss that took place and you're reminiscing over it because of Mother's Day or because of a birthday, God. Because our memory takes us back. But we know that you are the God that heals and we're praising you for it. And we see it as being so. I see Lewis up out of his bed. I see Lewis on the cruise ship. I see all of the people of Akana doing well and succeeding well. And I claim it and I speak it in Jesus name. Amen. Now, there's something I just did. I asked you yesterday to visualize. And when I said I see it, I want you to know I see it. But I, I wonder, did, did any of you put that in writing? Did any of you start drawing what you visualize? Because the more I understand, the more I learn from my mentors and the people that teach me, I am so I, I have limited the power of my thoughts, the power of our minds, because your thoughts connect you to the life you experience. Can, uh, your thoughts directly, directly, directly affect how you look and how you feel. The power of mind. It can shape everything in your life, in your body, and, and in your happiness. Visualization. So I asked you, I gave you an assignment yesterday to write it, visualize it, draw it. I don't care if you got to cut out pictures, cut out some pictures, do what you got to do. But visualize yourself as a pearl, sapphire, diamond, jade, emerald, ruby, all of that. Visualize that journey. And don't visualize it negatively. Visualize it how you want it to be. Visualize what you're going to be wearing when you walk across the stage. Visualizing the, the car you're going to be driving. Visualize the house you're going to be living in. Visualizing the love you're going to have in your life. Visualize all of it. Put it on paper. Visualization is a time-tested, proven technique that involves focusing on positive mental we, we, look, we get enough negative mental images. All you got to do is cut television off. Don't dare look at the news. You can get enough, enough negative mental images. So focus on positive mental images in order to achieve a particular goal. That's what visualization is. It's so powerful. It's so powerful because it impacts our subconscious mind. Those of you that are coaches know what I'm talking about. Power of the subconscious mind. Come on now. The Bible says it as a man think it in his heart, so is he. That's not the heart that beats the pumps. That, you can't think there. That's the heart of your mind. That's that subconscious mind that directs so much of the things that we do in our life. We wonder why we said it. We wonder why we felt it. Because something that triggered in your subconscious mind. My mentor used to say, see it, believe it, achieve it. See it, believe it, achieve it. We've got to believe in our visualization. It's only a matter of time before the vision becomes a reality. I don't know the time. I used to teach a message all the time. Get the victory over time. 
get the victory. Forget about how long it's going to take. Just see it, believe it, achieve it. Because negative thought patterns create self-limiting beliefs. And those beliefs derail any chance of success. There's no chance, absolutely none, if you're negative. So next time you have a negative thought or next time you're stressed out, step back and think about it. Making negative subconscious thoughts consciously can snap you out of a negative thought pattern. Just step back and look at yourself and say, uh -uh, I'm not going to think like that. This is a no parking zone. I'm not letting you in. You may knock at my door, but I'm not going to let you in. You got to have that snapshot. So there's some quotes I want to give you, and then we're going to be done today. And uh, leaders, get ready. We still are having our leadership call. Phyllis is going to lock us into it, but we're going to let her rest and recuperate and, and revive herself. So here's some quotes. Sarah Blakely. It's a quote. I don't know who. Uh, you, you look up the people and figure out who they are. Sarah Blakely. Having a mental snapshot of where you are, where you're going, and what you're moving toward is incredibly powerful. That's a quote from Sarah Blakely. Um, Cherry Carter Scott. She says, ordinary people believe only in the possible. Extraordinary people visualize not what is possible or probable, but rather what is impossible. And by visualizing the impossible, they begin to see it as possible. Now, if you were in Dallas, then maybe he said, I think he did say it as well as in Las Vegas, Dr. Breakthrough, he talked about impossible, separate the I am and the possible, and it's I'm possible. I am possible, okay? Uh, here's another one by Nikola Tesla. He says, my method is different. I do not rush into actual work. When I get a new idea, I start at once building it up in my imagination and make improvements and make improvements and operate the device in my mind. When I have gone so far as to embody everything in my invention, every possible improvement I can think of, and when I see no fault anywhere, I put into concrete form the final product of my brain. That's Nikola Tesla. Here's another, Albert Einstein. <laughs> Imagination is more important than knowledge. For while knowledge defines all we currently know and understand, imagination points to all we might yet discover and create. Here's one from Mark Twain. You can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. <laughs> I like that. Zig Ziglar, he said, if you want to reach a goal, you must see the reaching in your own mind before you actually arrive at your goal. All right, Vic Brandon, he says, learn to think like a winner. Think positive and visualize your strengths. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, he says this, formulate and stamp indelibly on your mind a mental picture of yourself as succeeding. Hold this picture tenaciously and never permit it to fade. Your mind will seek to develop this picture. Oh, I can see that those old school cameras developing, right? Brian Tracy said, all successful men and women are big dreamers. They imagine what their future could be, ideal in every respect, and then they work every day toward that distant vision, that goal or purpose. The key word there was work, y'all. Okay. Charles A. Garfield, he said, I've discovered that numerous peak performers use the skill of mental rehearsal of visualization. They mentally run through important events before they happen. That's Charles Garfield. Um, Keegan Bradley, Keegan Bradley. Keegan Bradley said, you can't swing with hesitation. You can't try to steer the ball to the flag. You can't worry about that water hazard as you take the club back. You have to pick the right club, visualize the shot you want to hit, 
and then focus on that shot until the ball is gone. That's about golf, y'all, in case you didn't know. All right, Robert Schwartz. Robert Schwartz says, the entrepreneur is essentially a visualizer and an actualizer. He can visualize something, and when he visualizes it, he sees exactly how to make it happen. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. Robert Collier, he says, see things as you would have them be instead of as they are. Now, you know, that's not a quote from him. You know, that's Bible, right? Call those things that be not as though they are, right? Okay, Gary Mack. Gary Mack says, no one can outperform his or her self-image. Muhammad Ali said, the man who has no imagination has no wings. Jerry Gillies, Gillies. Giles, I don't know how you pronounce that. It says, make sure you visualize what you really want, not what someone else wants for you. Walt Disney says, if you can dream it, you can do it. There's an anonymous quote that says, limits begin when vision, where vision ends. Henry David Thoreau, he said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you've imagined. Napoleon Hill, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Bruce Lee, as you think, so shall you become. Y'all know that's Bible too, as a man thinketh, right? Buddha, all that we are is the result of what we have thought. And last one, anonymous, vision without action is daydreaming. And action without vision is a nightmare. So start drawing. Visualization is powerful. Put, put it on paper, okay? And just know, I want you to visualize yourself attending all the stuff we got going on this weekend. This is a busy weekend, guys. Hopefully you've gotten emails. You, 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 you'll get another email. I'm getting ready to send out another email and another email to remind you, listen, one of the things that I do all the time is I put an alarm on my phone for anything I want to be a part of. So I've got an alarm already for Saturday. I always have an alarm for Saturday at 10 a.m. And it rings about 9.50 or 9.55. And it says, Overview with Willie Mooney. So it, it alarms, because we get busy, we get doing things, we forget, we want to do certain things. So, hey, we got these phones, they're always biased. Just put, go to the clock part and you can set multiple, multiple. There's no limit to the number of alarms you can set. That, that's just the way I do it. So I don't have to worry about remembering it. I'm not using my brain for that. I let the alarm remind me, right? So 10 a.m., yes, we're gonna be there. Crossing the finish line with your candidates, with the people that you want exposed to Akana. Get them on there. 10 a.m., that's Central Standard Time. 11 a.m., that's Eastern. 8 a.m., that's Pacific. Then at 12 noon, those of you who have been invited to the Mr. Breakthrough training because you purchased the luggage pack, you have uh, another invitation now for the second session of Dr. Breakthrough. 3 p.m., those of you that are wellness coaches, You'll get another email. If you didn't get it the first time, look for it the second time. And I've been hearing a lot of emails are going to spams, guys. So check your spam. Don't know why. Some of you are getting it sometime and it go to spam sometime. We can't explain it. That's that's these email carriers doing their thing just because of what we put in the subject line sometimes. So we haven't mastered that, but it's there. So look for it. 3 p.m. Flat Belly Wellness Coach Certification Group 7. But anybody can attend that's a wellness coach. I've been to every one of them. And guess what? You learn something all the time. Then Sunday, Sunday, Flat Belly Zoom is going to take place at 5 p.m. You introduce people to the Flat Belly lifestyle. You want them to know about the Akana lifestyle that we are doing right now that's a part of who we are, that's changing people's lives. Get them on that call. They'll learn everything about the BioScan, about the Flat Belly program, all that. And then at 6 p.m., we've got 66 people on this call. I want to see 66 people plus 
the other people that are on your team who are not here on our first Akana certification. Yep, I don't care. You've taken the test. You've passed when you were Wakana. You got your you got your certificate, but you have no idea what we're going to find out about on the uh, first. Akana. You want to be a part of the first, right? Yeah, first Akana certification, 6 p.m. Sunday, Central Standard Time. Uh, Sylvia has already sent out the email for it. And if you're not getting emails, you need to ask somebody. You know, find out what's going on because you should be informed. Now, don't ask if you're not checking. <laughs> Definitely check, right? But our first 6 p.m. Akana certification, let's pack it out. Come on, let's pack it out. That being said, I'm done. Have a great Akana kind of weekend. Bye for now.